ring shout, song and dance, a celebration of black joy, such as the essence of the Juneteenth experience. It is our genuine independence day and it is open to everyone who shares its mission, enjoying and perpetrating freedom, especially the freedom of African people that were denied by lash law and lynch rope for hundreds of years. Aloha, welcome to Sister Power. I'm Sharon Thomas Yarbrough and our special guests who are celebrating Juneteenth with Sister Power is Rashara Knight and Daphne Power, Barbie Wooten. Welcome Queens to Sister Power. Thank you. Yeah, we were talking earlier, Queens, you know, Juneteenth. It's a, it's Juneteenth 2020 celebration and still I rise. And I want to start with you, Rashara. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, thank you. First, thank you so much for having me on. Um, I just want to say her spirit, um, Miss Sharon's spirit is so warm. When I met her, she immediately embraced me and was, oh, you look wonderful. How are you doing? Let's change information. That is the kind of love and the spirit I feel like we're entering into with this Juneteenth weekend coming up. I want to keep that energy going. So I am a, a native of Syracuse, New York, and I settled here in Hawaii about five years ago. Uh, the intention was to do clinical social work. And since then, I've also moved into real estate with Hawaii Life. And so I spend most of my time here enjoying this beautiful island, enjoying the great food and meeting people like these two ladies. Oh, wonderful. Daphne, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, you're a veteran here, but put the new <laughs> words. My name is uh, attorney Daphne Barbie Wooten. I'm a lawyer. I specialize in civil rights. I've been here since, uh, you don't want to know, <laughs> or I don't want to tell you. I'll just say I've been here a long, long time. Um, and I am looking forward to celebrating Juneteenth this year because President Biden made it a, an official federal holiday. So a lot of federal workers, all of them actually, have off on Monday, although Juneteenth is on the 19th. Um, and I, as I was telling you, just going to the post office and seeing that big sign saying, we're closed for Juneteenth, it just gives you such a joy. It really does, because they're celebrating the holiday that, that wasn't recognized for many years. And so now everybody's understanding the importance of true freedom, not just freedom for some, but freedom for everybody. Uh, that, that's a feel good sign right there. Rashara, on a personal note, what does Juneteenth mean to you? Uh, um, again, in Syracuse, our Juneteenth was such a big thing. And I didn't really understand the significance of it, to be honest with you. Only getting older and more exposure, she understood the importance. But our community, we would have our local community center. We have a talent show, dancers, steppers food vendors, it would be quite just a celebration of Black liberation. And that's what I grew up experiencing. So when I moved out of my hometown, it was really a surprise to go to places where there wasn't a Juneteenth celebration. So that's why I'm so happy this year in particular, every day coming up to Juneteenth, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and even on Monday, there's an opportunity for everyone to be involved in the celebration. And I know that it's a celebration for Black people, but this is really an American celebration. We should all be happy about this form of slavery and bondage that it is in our history. So we need to get together as a community. This is a wonderful time to celebrate. Uh, it is Daphne, attorney Daphne Barbie. What is Juneteenth? Let's tell the newcomers and, and the people who are not familiar about Juneteenth. What is Juneteenth and why is it important? Well, it's based upon an actual historical event on June 19th. Um, and that has to do with after the Civil War, as many people know, President Lincoln um, did the Emancipation Proclamation saying that all slaves, slaves or, um, were free in the Southern states. Interesting, it was you know, towards the Southern states, which is ridiculous, but what can I say? Anyway, so um, Texas was the last state to acknowledge the Emancipation Proclamation and to acknowledge that slavery was prohibited in the United States. And um, 
what happened is that they kept going business as usual, trying to um, keep slavery as legal. And the um, United States um, Army from the North had to march into Texas June 19th, 1865, right after the Civil War, and tell all enslaved people that they were indeed free. They did not have to work for no wages um, and that slavery was prohibited in the United States. So that's why we celebrate it as the true Freedom Day, because as we know, the 4th of July was for um, was not for women and was not for African-Americans, was not for Native Americans. It was for white men. And so that's why Frederick Douglass, the famous abolitionist, gave a speech about your 4th of July. I don't celebrate it. It's not for me. It's not for the slave. You know, because we're not free. So now we have a national holiday which celebrates true freedom, you know, the abolishment of slavery. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, Juneteenth is a day to remember America's past, recognize the resilience and strength of Black people, and celebrate the progress we have made. So, Rashara, what is your opinion on how we can support? local black businesses? I think we need to be intentional and deliberate about how we spend our dollars. Understanding that the way that we spend our money, it pours into the success of another black family, how they feed, clothe, and house their families when you buy into their businesses. So when you find a business that you like, you know, don't just talk about it. Spend your money with them. <laughs> share with other people so that they can spend their money with them. And even though the business may be by a black person, if it's a good service or a good, it can be used by everyone. And I know you probably have seen it so many times online, a new business, there'll be so, so much hype around it, right? Oh, you gotta try this place. And there might be a line around the corner. I want us to have that same sort of energy when it comes to black businesses and um, places like you know Black Hawaii Online, the Popolo Project, Black Bazaar, they're always telling you about opportunities to pour into Black businesses. So I feel like you take our money, they're understanding that it can go a long way and to help, you know, get that liberation that we're talking about now. We have that freedom from physical bondage, and now we're moving on to the financial freedom by pouring into our Black businesses. Yeah, you're a realtor. And so how is the real estate now? Well, I think everyone's a little bit nervous now. And I think just because if you know the news does it that way, they they put out information about the rates, the economy. You know they have all these big um, like red flag words that make people worry. But if you're someone who's been planning and preparing to buy or sell before you decide to halt your plans, make sure you speak to someone to see if that's the right decision for you. Because home ownership, and I just want to note too, June is also uh, National Home Ownership Month, so we want to promote Black homeowners. And, you know, um, not just outside investors coming in and renting to us, but that we're owning a piece of something that's really invaluable. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, we, Juneteenth is going to start Saturday, June 18th, and it's going to be at the Trinity Missionary Baptist Church uh, on Saturday, June 18th from 12 to 4 p.m. And that's where we usually celebrate. Uh, what I am enjoying about this Juneteenth as well, Daphne, is the African American Lawyers Association and Sisters in Park Hawaii, along with the Oahu Democrats, we have a twist to our Juneteenth where we are honoring, it's an honor of Justice Patanji Brown Jackson. And, mm -hmm. you know, you're an attorney. You know what she has gone through and is going to go through, and she's going to be sworn in soon. Just tell us a little bit about the experience that will happen on Sunday, which happens to be Father's Day. <laughs> it's Father's Day and it's also Juneteenth Day. Mm -hmm. Now, Katanji Jackson, uh, Katanji Brown Jackson is the very first African American female to be on the United States Supreme Court in 233 years. It's about time, and frankly, I think she should have been appointed a while back before, um, <laughs> but it's just something to be 
celebratory about, to be so proud about. Um, it's a historic and historic moment. And so uh, this Juneteenth, we will be celebrating her um, reaching this glass, breaking the glass ceiling on the United States Supreme Court. And as we know, um, that, uh, you know, just to have somebody out there sends a message to all Americans that we are a country that's inclusive, not exclusive. Because for many years, America was segregated and had legal apartheid systems. So her arrival says, this is going to be a new era and we're gonna reach the sky. So if you don't mind, I wrote a little poem. I'm gonna read it at the Juneteenth event. Yeah, and I'll be yeah. real quick, it's not a long one, but she just inspires me at all of the African-American lawyers. Some people just cried when she got up. You just, just cried because you can feel it in the air. Um, but anyways, let me get back to my quick poem. Um, for Katanji Brown Jackson, Ma'at. African Egyptian goddess of justice has arrived. She is mother of two, daughter, wife, showing anything is possible. Reach for the stars and beyond. She's a thinker, a doer, a writer of words that matter, a lawyer, a judge, brown skin, corn roll, proud justice of the United States Supreme Court. Ma'a arrives and we are ready for Justice Ketanji Brown Jackson. <laughs> Yay, that was beautiful. So Thank well you. written. I, I, I'm, I'm beaming right now. I'm so yeah. excited about, you know, our history and we're acknowledging uh, one another. Rashar, I want to come to you. You know, Juneteenth begs us to reflect and improve. What advice would you give to promote home ownership? Uh, let me first say that you shouldn't think of it as this long, far off goal for you. I know when I had the opportunity to buy my home, I was very nervous because I thought I needed this 20% down. And really it was like, oh, you wait till you're older and you have married, you're married, you have children. It was like this idea somewhere else. And then my friend says to me, why don't you just meet with a, a realtor, just meet with her. And she looked over my finances and said, I, I think you can buy right now. I was, I was so shocked. And when I tell you that it has changed the course of my life, what I've been able to do with the purchase, because I was able to use the equity in my home to take care of other people in my family, things that I never would have been able to do had I not been, um, you know, had I not purchased. So I do encourage you to not think of it as a far off goal. And even if you, you're not ready right now, like said, maybe because of the market or your finances, sit down with someone and come up with a plan because it is really important. To, to own a piece of something that you can pass on to your family or you can build on. Yeah, good advice, good advice. Daphne, you have had many experiences in the criminal justice system. Uh, I should say in the legal system. So what would you, what would be your advice to black men and women on their new journey in the legal system. Keep preserving, keep, you know, keep going forward. Of course, you're gonna have a lot of obstacles. Um, that's life, you know, many people have obstacles, but you just keep going, keep pushing, don't take no. If you lose a case, appeal, because <laughs> you may win on appeal. And sometimes that happens. Um, and just keep pressing your point. If you're right, you're right and take it all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court because we, we will have a new justice and she'll take a different <laughs> book. And um, I just wanted to comment a little bit about home ownership. You know that in some parts of our country in the U.S., such as Evanston, Illinois, they have reparations for African-Americans, which includes down payment on home ownership. Oh, I like yeah. that. And who's in Illinois? That sounds like an excellent opportunity to remove at least one barrier to home ownership. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. <laughs> Knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. So, Rashard, what challenges have you faced in being a Black businesswoman here in Hawaii? I think probably some of the similar challenges that women have in general is that making their voice heard, right? And people taking you seriously about what you're doing. And unfortunately, just being a woman in general, I feel like I've had people that were inappropriate just 
they had no intention on doing actual business with me, but they still contacted me anyway. So <laughs> that's an unfortunate, uh, an unfortunate thing um, here. But I do feel like I've had a good network of people who see what you're doing. They see your consistency. Like I said, when I saw you, um, you're immediate like, hey, let me see how I can help you. That sort of attitude. So even though I've had some barriers, you know, I still feel very optimistic about my, my potential here in Hawaii. Absolutely. Absolutely. This is, you know, I call, Hawaii is the bus stop to heaven. <laughs> That's like, what I call it. And also the sun kisses your skin every day. It's absolutely wonderful. So definitely let's talk about Sunday, which is what, 10 days away. Mm -hmm. And it's Juneteenth 2022 celebration. And it's mm -hmm. from three to 5 p.m. Let's talk about the featured performances. Yes, it's in Kakaaka Park in um, Picnic Area 3. So guess what? You can go to the Juneteenth Convention 3 to 5. And afterwards, you can body surf at Point Panic. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, it, it's a winner. It's, or take your dad to Point Panic and bodyboard with him. Um, but at any rate, yes, uh, we're going to have uh, drumming. We're going to have poetry. We're going to have some speakers. Um, in fact, the Chief Justice of the Hawaii Supreme Court will be there honoring Katanji Brown Jackson, um, as well as there's been um, two, a couple new African-American judges that have been um, uh, in Hawaii. They've been appointed by the Chief Justice. And we also have retired Judge Sandra Sims who will be there to give a little speech. Um, and we have uh, singers, uh, singers that will be singing some songs. So it'll be entertaining. You do have to bring your own chair because it is outside at the park um, uh, or, or a mat um, and your own food picnic. No alcohol because it's a city park. Um, and uh, it should be really fun. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. It's a variety of people that will be talking and singing and drumming. We're going to have a good time. <laughs> yeah, it's a beautiful place. I mean, this bring the entire family to on Sunday to Kaka'aka Park because we have uh, the poet Ava Be Beeman is going to read. We have Dr. Uh, Catherine Wardell Takara and Still I Rise. We also will have Dr. Deborah Butler who will be singing. So this is the place to be. You can do Saturday at the Trinity Missionary Baptist Church and come right over to, um, to Kaka'aka Park park and you know the sunset is beautiful the backdrop is the ocean you know who i tell you this juneteenth sunday is going to be one of the most beautiful juneteenth scenery so that's the place to be so let's talk about the colors and the meaning of the juneteenth flag does anybody want to jump in and talk about the juneteenth uh colors are red green and black and the significance of the colors I can, um, you know, the red is for the blood, the struggle. The green is for the land, real estate. <laughs> and um, black is for the color of the skin. Absolutely. So it's freedom. It's also uh, the color of many African flags. For example, Ghana, red, black, and green. Yeah, it, you know, the black stands for rich black culture. The, this color also represents melanin and African diaspora unification. It's just, this is going to be such a wonderful, feel good weekend. So, and everyone should celebrate Juneteenth. Everyone should celebrate. It's, it's for everyone. Please come out and join us. And as Daphne said earlier, bring your mat, bring your water. It's only from three to five. We have some very um, prestigious speakers. Uh, on that day and you want to celebrate, bring your dad, bring the family. And I want to come to you, Rashara. Who inspires you? My mama. I sent you a picture of my mom because um, I want to include, she's a small business owner in Syracuse, New York. She has a food truck there, the Soul Food Extension. But my mother is like the definition of resilience and uh, commitment. She's her biggest cheerleader. And the way that she approaches her work, the passion, and the people that are loyal to her because they see she has a purpose for what she's doing. She is my inspiration. And when I'm feeling 
a little bit shaky about how things are going. One, you know, I know she's going to send a direct prayer to, you know, and that's important for me, but I know that my mother's going to encourage me and I see it in the way that she lives. So that is, that's my inspiration. My mom, Mercedes in Syracuse. Oh, I love that. I, oh, I miss my mother. Uh, Daphne, who inspires you? Mm. Well, well, of course, the most recent one is Katanji Brown Jackson. <laughs> so I have to keep saying her name left and right. I want to put it out there so everybody knows that because it's such a historic and historic change in our government. Um, but I'm inspired by a lot of different people. Um, when I was in college, it was Angela Davis, Dr. Angela Davis. Um, and so I took philosophy courses, but then I ended up in law school um, because, you know, philosophy is really good. You write books and you, you become a professor, but you, you can also do more with law because then you're practicing. You're practicing your philosophy in real life matters. Um, my father, of course, was my, one of my inspirations. He was an attorney and civil rights litigator as well. Um, and uh, of course, my mother, they both have passed. Um, but uh, there's a lot of people. You can take inspiration from a lot of people. People you don't know can inspire you deeply. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I was reading about the grandmother of Juneteenth, Opal. Uh, and she's the one that fought for Juneteenth celebration. And she's in her 80s, almost in her 90s now. And so we are on our day of uh, Juneteenth. We're going to honor a few of the uh, living, uh, well, the legends here in Hawaii. You know, for instance, Faye Kennedy, uh, Marsha Joyner fought for the Martin Luther King holiday, and Jerry Lange. And it, it, it's just going to be a fun time. And, and Daphne, I'm going to come back to you. And before we close, uh, Rashara, how has being a Black woman affected this experience? um affected the experience uh in many ways um i'm actually very proud um of being a, a woman of color and black um you know they had deep rich history and the proud tradition of uh, fighting for justice i mean that's something that's really worthwhile in your life yeah rashari in closing tell us how it's affected you you've only been living here in hawaii with five years Five years, five years. And being in a community where there's not a lot of Black people, again, I have to be intentional about finding ways to stay connected to my culture. Also, I am embracing the Hawaiian culture, right? We're in someone else's land and they're, they're in someone else's country and really loving and enjoying that, but also remembering that I'm a part of the, you know, the African diaspora. So it's really important to me to remember not to be too far removed from, um, from my Black culture. Yeah, you know, African-American history is American history. And, yes. and, and, mm -hmm. and this is something that we should always hold dear to our hearts. And so again, Daphne, let's talk about Sunday. Let's refresh everyone's memory that mm -hmm. about Juneteenth 2022 celebration. Yep, Kakaako Park. Okay, that's where Point Panic is. And, you know, it's, it's just a beautiful place. You get to see the ocean, you get to see the waves, sometimes even a whale, a whale tail. But um, <laughs> mainly it's, it's just to camaraderie, to meet people, to greet people, and to celebrate a day of freedom. It is. And, you know, I want to thank you, Queens, for sharing your wisdom and sharing your time with Sister Power. And I was telling you earlier, before we came on camera, for some reason, this Juneteenth is filling my heart. It, it really is. And, and I think because finally we're getting that acknowledgement that we so deserve. And so thank you, Rashara Knight. And keep up the good work on your real estate. Also, thank you, Attorney Daphne Barbie Wooten. And I would like to leave this, these few words with our sister power viewers. Traditions connect us to our ancestors, keeping them alive in our hearts and every cell in our bodies. This week, reach out to a family member or tap 
into your memories and honor your lineage by upholding a family tradition. We look forward to seeing each and every one of you to come out Sunday, June 19th, to celebrate June 10th, 2022. I'm your host, Sharon Thomas Yarbrough. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.